welcome to today's episode. We have Matt. Hello. Or Matthew. He said I could call him Matt. Absolutely. Matt, Matthew. <laughs> Matt, yeah. He's our best friend now. <laughs> and um, sorry about that to our other best friends. We are going through the hedge today to see Tuli's boatyard. So come with us. One of the, the reasons the boatyard's really famous is uh, obviously the, the Tudies are, you know, are, are very famous on their own, but one of the reasons why everybody knows about the boatyard is because um, there's a chap called Tom Rolt. He, uh, he was basically a, a mechanic and he was a, an engineer and he specialised in how to build, uh, build cars and he had a garage, but he didn't like the way cars were being mass produced. So he sold his share of the garage and he uh, bought a boat which used to be belong to his uncle called Cressy and he knew the two of these and he bought his boat here to have it restored. Now he wanted to become a writer so he wrote, he came here and started writing about the two of these and what they were doing to his boat and restoring it and the boat I thought was a bit odd because he he was pitting a boat, he was first of all converting a, a narrow boat into a liverboard and which is an odd thing to do anyway. But then to, to, to make it even worse, he put a, boat, a bath on it as well for his wife, which the boaters thought was absolutely, you know, completely extravagant thing to do. It's like having a, a pool or something, you know, they, they thought it was completely extravagant. Then he wrote about the characters and all the work they did in the dry dock and the plesters in the forge and his journey on the waterways and the, the state of the canals. And this became the catalyst for setting up the Inland Waterways Association which obviously campaigned for saving the canals and reopening them. So the reason why we've got a, nap, a network now um, to cruise on is because Tom Bolt in his book, and it all started here with them bringing their boat to the Tuleys. So it all happened in the dry dock here. That's where it started. If that type of thing interests you, there is so much more here and there is so much in, you know, interest in, in the boatyard and there's so much history and we've got lots of really interesting facts and information in my personal story of running this yard. I've put into a book uh, called Forging Ahead, the history of Tudy's Boatyard and that covers the, the, uh, the complete history from the, uh, the canal arriving at Banbury through to modern times here and it talks about the characters, the Tudy's, Rolts and uh, it's personal stories as well. Right. Uh, this workshop here, um, it's dated in the 1930s and uh, it's all made out of boat hulls. If you look in there, there's all mudworm from the bottom of the boats where they were sitting in the water. The Tudies took over the yard in 1900. They were farmers. Basically, Manuel Tudy took over, the, uh, bought some boats, and he became what was called a number one which was a sole trader which owned their own boats and they got paid per load they delivered and they delivered coal, I don't know, they, didn't, they delivered um, pig iron between um, Coventry and Samuelson's found, uh, foundry. So he used to deliver pig iron to Coventry and they used to bring a, sa a sand back to the foundry. And then George Tooley took over the yard around 1900. Uh, this is the um, paint stake from basically the 19, um, well, the, it worked, the, the workshop was from the 1930s, but basically it's paint really from the 1950s. There's all the, the white leads and red leads and all the good stuff you can't use these days. But one of the interesting things is this door. Uh, this door was made out of a planks of a boat called the Fair Trader. It came into the dry dock to have the back cabin replaced and they, re they reused the wood to make this door. One of the interesting things is, is actually if you look at the door itself, this is where we've been cleaning the brushes and there's a layer of paint on the door there which is about two and a half three inches thick. So that was the 2D's uh, door for cleaning their brushes. 
and this is um, Belgium Machinery Shop and this is where they used to make all the metal parts of the boat. So the machinery dates from about 1890, so it was second hand to the Thule's. We've got a lot of volunteers who've been helping us and it's actually the Banbury Model Engineering Society who've actually stripped all these machines down and restored them all. So they're all now in working order, working slowly, but we're just fitting motors to them so we're going to be running them full speed and using them as well. The way this works is over in the, uh, the, from the corner, it takes a belt up to the ceiling, and then from the ceiling, it turns this wheel, and then the wheel comes, turns across your, your head, and it's bearing to the top, and it holds the top, it turns that wheel at the top, and that comes down to this rather, to this bench, and there's a rather impressive circular saw, which is on this bench, which is used for actually cutting the planks. Dry dock, uh, dates to 1788. Um, well, actually, no, it doesn't because we changed our mind. We, we said it was 1788, but we changed our mind to 1778. And uh, again, you have to find out from the book if you're interested in that one. Basically, it's, it's, a, it's a dry dock, and it's very unusual for dry docks to be dry. And if you look at the floor, it is actually a bone dry dock, so it works extremely, very, very well. The way it works is that at the northern end, there are three heavy wooden planks that hold back the water. We lift the top plank, the water um, comes into the dry dock and it fills up in about five minutes. We then we place the rest of the planks, take the rest of the planks out and we then bring a boat in and we put it into the dock and we tie it off with ropes. We then replace the planks and we pull the plug and the plug is a drainage sluice in the corner of the dry dock which takes the water off to about uh, two and a half, uh, three hundred metres away. Once it's uh, out, we wash the floor, we wash the boat, and we generally do hull blackings. In the last 15 years, we've done one and a half thousand boats for the dry dock, so that's around 100 a year, so on average about one every three days. This boat here is uh, in for a complete paint job, it's in for six weeks, and that's a strip back to bare metal and a full repaint job of the boat. The other thing I wanted to ask about yep. is the old wooden boat that we yes, can moored up next that. to. <laughs> do you want to go inside it if you want? Yeah, do, you want nice go, do you want to go inside it? <gasps> yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, come on then. This boat here is called Hardy and it's a boat built in 1940 by nurses, so it was probably built for the war. We don't have um, things like moorings which bring income in like the other larger yards. As a commercial yard, it's very, very small. And, and we've also got the element of the general public uh, as well. So um, that has also adds pressure to us, which isn't very profitable as it was. So, uh, but we still want to do all that side of it. And it's really important to show everybody the boatyard. So um, one of the things we want to do is to hark back to uh, the days of the, the Tulis and, and they, were, um, they ran a boatyard which was famous for wooden boats and restoring wooden boats. So we would like Tulis to go back and start looking at wooden boats and working in them more. And um, we are actually uh, have plans to actually build the outside of Tulis. We'll be building brand new wooden hulls on the site. There are boats around like this, like Hardy, around the system. Now, we wanted uh, to get a, an old boat to restore and we wanted a boat with some ties to two of these, but we couldn't really um, find one in the time frame we had. And we found about um, this boat Hardy up at Braunston and it was sunk and it had been there for four years and it was in danger of, of being broken up. So we went up 
and we raised it. We um, we got off the, the, the canal bed, uh, floated it, patched up all the holes, and decided we'd, we were going to have the boat. And we, we salvaged it pretty much, and we brought it back to Tuli's, where we're actually restoring it. In the meantime, we just so happened to find out that actually Hardy is a local boat, and he used to deliver coal to Banbury, and actually, which is absolutely amazing. And uh, I've got photographs of it moored outside the dry dock and it's rather bizarre so it's really really crazy one of the reasons for actually lifting this boat up was to actually say to everybody look there's these historic boats all the way around the country which are sinking or sunk uh, they are falling apart and they're being broken up and this is our history and we should not let this happen so we should do something about it and so by raising hardy we would like to bring some publicity and some uh, attention to the fact that this is happening and we'd like the future of Tuli's to actually address this and to try and rescue some of these boats which are being destroyed. Due to the uh, interest in the boatyard we get a lot of people asking questions and part of, actually part of our remit is actually show this to the general public so recently we've actually come up with the idea of actually doing an open day and in fact they're actually open mornings from 10 o'clock until uh, 12 30 and that's on every Saturday and it's free and you can come along and you can come into the boatyard and see areas of the boatyard you wouldn't see normally uh, you can go to the dry dock and you can have a look at the boat in there. Uh, you can go into the, uh, the forge, you can see a um, blacksmith and um, some of the volunteer blacksmiths as well uh, doing demonstrations and we also you have a guided tour and with for guided tours we do that for donations as well um, and then you can be shown around the boatyard and be told the history of the site but if you don't want to um, have a guided tour you can just wander around and chat to many of the volunteers which are here and he will tell you all about the site anyway and um, you can go to the belt room and the carpenter store and uh, we also have boat trips as well as well so that we, that's we charge for those ones as well all the money we make on the day of the uh, working museum is actually goes back into the working museum itself so uh, that all happens and hopefully um, shortly we'll also have our tea room set up here as well We don't actually get any funding on the site at all and we never had received any money. We're actually working with a lot of volunteers and we've got a great support of volunteers, probably about 20 volunteers now, uh, who are learning to be blacksmiths, who are learning how to handle boats and also doing guided tours as well. We also are, ask, are looking for volunteers, so if anybody would like to come along and help out, then that would be fantastic, we could really do. Uh, in fact, we're, we're, we've got a, a network of uh, Friends of Tuli's where you can come along and, uh, and, and sign up to be a friend of Tuli's, so that, that would be a, a really good thing to do. Okay, so literally, here is the gate okay, that um, Matthew is going to close on us. For everything. <laughs> <laughs> Thank okay. you for rescuing us and for looking at our boat and for showing us around the yard and also for being an awesome historian. Because yeah. that's kind of what you are, isn't it? Yeah, a bit, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, we're going to put those links to the book below. We're going to put the links to well, everything in the description below. So watch that. Excellent. Cool. Don't forget, give us a like, subscribe, and Come back next time for more episodes.